We're here again with Keith from MDT. We're going to be talking about the ACC Elite that they came out with. So we got the new ACC Elite chassis here. Uh, we took the original ACC. We tried to find a few things that would make it better. And really, that list was pretty short, right? I mean, we, we love that chassis. Yeah. And, you know, his shooters are freak. I love the Dagon thing, but what can we do? But one thing we wanted to look at is is taking applied technology to it. So the, the fore end is, uh, you know, we wanted stiffness and rigidity and recoil management. So we widened the fore end out on this. We thickened it up quite a bit, about three eighths of an inch. Yep. Uh, which took all the torsional twist out of this uh, in all the flex. Uh, uh, we enclosed the forend, and that increased the rigidity a significant amount. Yeah, no. uh, whereas the other was a bolt-on, we could slide weights in and out. We kind of, nobody really did it that way. Yeah. They just took them out, put, put in what they wanted, and, uh, and when we found the overall flex and rigidity was just more important that bad. Yeah. So, cool thing is the whole top is now drilled and tapped for pins and threaded to put night vision bridges or control bridge uh, like this unit right here has. So we have these control bridges. It can be stacked. We can get three up on the front of that with no problem with what you have with smoke players. And you can use that as a mirage shield, a control bridge to grab with your hand, or a night vision bridge with a big tiny rail if you need. Yep. Uh, as we go to the bottom of this, we've got now our lock for the really right stuff, our lock clamps and so forth. Yep. Still has a full arc rail that we actually gauge. Like we make sure it meets the specs. No. So we have a go, no go gauge and it doesn't leave our shop unless it's been tested to work. So you can be assured that any of the RRS clamps or whatever you put it in, you're not gonna have something to slide what you call no go. Uh, we've gone through, we've also got laser cut, uh, skate tape that fits on the bottom that's recessed in. So it's still flush for everything to slide up and down, but this all grab your bag better if you choose. And that comes extra in the box, so you don't have to put it on. No, it's got it extra yep. in the box. Uh, got our end lock all the way down the side, and then we continued with a couple accessory slots that will work with most end locks on the side here. So like your dough card holder they have, your two round holder, stuff like that. Exactly, yep. future timers, whatever may come out. Yeah. Right, so there's a lot of accessories for that. Then we get into our bag wall area here. And, one, and so we really widened this chassis out through here to control flex in this area because it's been hollowed out for other things. And done a lot thicker. It is, and we want to drive recoil straight back. We don't want any bending, flexing, twisting, anything along that line under recoil. Yep. What, we widened all this out and that gave us a couple cool things we could do. We could extend this down so our our front back, our bag, uh, bag stop, the bag stop is there and uh, barricade stop. It comes down a little farther to protect the mag to make sure you don't inch in, in you know, the day yep. or whatever into your bag a little farther. But then by having this a little wider, it allowed us to really flare the inside of this. Yep. So we, you know, from the, the pistol world, quick mag changes and so forth, now we're able to apply this in a bolt action chassis system. Yep. So as we're in there, we're trying, we're like, hey, why not build an adjustable mag catch? So now we have an adjustable mag catch that if you have, it, you know, we can make every different magazine uh, be it ours, ideally, for yeah, somebody right. else's, and, and all the different actions, you know, with different diameter bolts and so forth, to be able to have the same bolt, eng or bolt engagement to the rounds no. out of the magazine. Other cool feature we did is inside here, we cut these slots all the way around, and we have Delron inserts that you can put in. So some of the rimfire world is really, really critical for mag tilt, yeah. right? So now we have these inserts in there for some of these polymer and, and undersized magazines for rimfire magazines where you can t tune them exactly where they'll feed in. You can put these inserts if you need to yep. uh, to just really hold that mag really snug so you don't have to worry about any sheaving or whatever accuracy degradation uh, getting the lead into the chamber. Yeah. We come back from there into the uh, trigger guard. So we've got it. We've got the uh, yeah, the box will come with a couple different cutouts of this tape. So you have a place to index your finger. So a lot of people want a place to put their finger when they run the bolt. You know, yep. good fundamentals would be index. Now come to the trigger. Yep. So we've got ovals and then these longer ones so you can find your place so you can constantly have a tactile feel to your finger yep. and you know that you're doing that each time. Yeah. All right. We've got our slot on the bottom where you can go do all your adjustments on your trigger. But like the chassis, no. you don't have to had to reach in and do it from the 90 degree angle. Yep. And then we come back in through the butt. Well, as you see here, we've got a straight line from the front 
all the way back through the mag, and all the way back into the buttstock. There's no dips, there's no nothing in this. So all that energy is gonna come straight through the recoil lug all the way back into the shooter. And the idea is to not have that flex, bend, and whatever. Yeah. I mean, we apply science when we build things. So we put accelerometers and we just tried to see where vibrations with flex, everything came from to a system and we wanted to minimize that. And this is one of the ways we've done that. Yeah. So we've come through into our buttstock that it comes standard uh, with a short length of pull. It comes with a pillar that bumps you out to 13, 13 and a half. That makes it look totally seamless in here. You, here here's a version right here that has that on there. looks just like it's supposed to be. And that takes us from our, you know, in the 12s to out to 13, 13 and a quarter, right? Yeah. Instead of having, you can still do this though, right? You can still do that as well, yes. And then you can take that 13 and a quarter and push that out to 14. I don't know what the max is, but it's probably close to 15 inches around to the seat. Uh, so we also went in and we still have our adjustable grip that we've always had that are just four aft can, so you can make it fit the ergonomics of your hand. You know? But then we've gone to this connector bar on the box, which you can take off if you don't like it. Uh, but the idea is to keep all this as stiff as possible so all that energy goes directly into the rear. And then we have our thumb uh, adjustable thumb rests on here that with just a uh, one wrench, you can move that forward, backward, tilt it to your specific ergonomics of your hand. Yeah. Uh, we found toolless on all of our adjustments back here. So you just loosen this nut back up, push it in, and you can take your cheek piece up, down, release it wherever you want to and stop it and then tighten it up and it has zero movement once you do that. But also underneath the cheek for us, we have your every Allen, we all your Allen wrenches to adjust the chassis. So if you need to move a weight or you want to tune your uh, okay. own shelf, whatever you want, they're held in here with magnets and your Allen wrenches fit in there. Or if you want your scope wrench in there instead, you could put that in here with plan. Yeah. So we've gone to steel inserts inside here that are underneath the nuts that keep prevents uh, galling from uh, a lot of times when you tighten up your action bolts. The reason people's action bolts would, would come loose on uh, different systems out there is you got aluminum to steel. Nope. Now with that steel-steel interface, you're not getting that expansion contraction and that galling where you're just creating a softer deal. No, nope. so they'll never come loose so your torques will be correct. Yeah. Uh, the butt pad, so we have toolless, toolless on the rear for like the pull, toolless cheek piece. You can slide it forward and backward. Uh, and all your torque specs are actually engraved on the bottom of the chassis system now. So hopefully it gets through that. So now you don't have to look in the manual. Hey, what was that supposed to be? No. Oh yeah, it's 65 inch pounds, go for it. Brown. Uh, as we get to the butt, it is also adjustable up, down. We've got little markings on the side. You can remember what your mark was and go right back to it. Uh, and we've allowed that offset to be significantly born. So I don't know what the exact number is, but it's about a half inch offset or more left and right. Yeah. So the idea with, with shooting now is we used to shoot with a sling, right? And yeah. then we had these long lengths of bull we can in our body with put our elbow on the ground. Now we're shooting off five odds with modern technology. Yeah. So we're bringing those rifles all the way in by your neck. And so, uh, and that manages recoil. If I push on you here, you move. And yeah. I push on you here, you don't, right? Yeah. And so everybody thinks the shoulder pocket's for the rifle. Well, no, it's not. It's as close to the middle of your body as you can, so you can run that through your bone structure of your body. Yep. Well, we can offset this. Some people don't like this collarbone being hit by their, their butt pad. So now we can camp that so it'll clear it and offset it to get that middle of that chassis in even farther to you for better recoil management. Awesome. I mean, uh, you guys really think about this. Everything is here for a purpose. It's not because it looks cool. It's not because somebody's seen it and I want to make something that looks neat. We made it work. We figured out what's going to make it great. Then we made it look cool. Yeah, right? I was going to say, it does look nice. It does look sleek. I like the things that I made on. Yeah. So another question, the weights. So your internal weights, those are going to be the same for the old ACC versus the new one, right? Exactly. So you, can take, you can take the five piece, one piece, whatever internal weights you want from the old ACC and just drop it right in here and they'll bolt right in. Yep. The external weights are all standard unlock and they will work on there anywhere in any of those positions that we had before. Nope. We've got uh, vibration dampeners that will press into the rear, similar to these that'll be released here in the next few weeks, as well as a rear external weight that's fitted specifically to this if someone chewed. And what was the point of the damper? So 
again, we, we looked at technology and as we make these systems heavier and heavier and heavier over time, energy has to go somewhere. So uh, if we give that energy a place to go, then everything else becomes more predictable, especially like with, uh, when, you, when you shoot a rifle, you know, you've got barrel width, you've got all that. Well, if that vibration doesn't have anywhere to go, well, then it could be unpredictable energy coming back through the barrel. Nope. So now we give vibration a place to go, the system's quieter, and uh, we've seen with some systems, significant accuracy change, uh, uh, going with vibration amperes to not. Am I gonna tell you right, book gonna shoot better with amperes? The answer is no. Have I seen that? Numerous times. Perfect, right? Excellent. And then trying to think. So the external weight, we got a new design for those. If your banker wings will go on in there, you got the this bridge, the garage grid, whatever on tops here. So that will also stiffen it up a little bit more too, versus just have it open all the way around. Exactly, but I'll tell you what. This with the beauty of it being pan, you could take your night vision bridge off, put it right back on. It's gonna be in the same place. No, nope. you're not gonna be able to load that iPod and change this point of I hate. No. Okay. Uh as far as stiffen it up. I think this thing's pretty stiff. I don't know the yeah, it might still want it thicker. So so bolting them on there makes it look cool and makes it makes the shoe better. If you want to, yes, I'm sure it does stiffen it, but I don't think you can get it to flex it first place. Yeah, excellent. Cool. Anything else that we forgot? The probably the many thing. probably many things that I forgot because there's about twenty seven different upgrades to this. Uh but uh not that I can think of. Perfect. <laughs> I know the inside here, I like that, is that you have the rods in there that we can fine tune our mag. So we can go from our rear fire to our MDT, BR mag, whatever we got, we can just get it fine tuned, like set, take a little bit of sandpaper to it ourselves if we need to, right? To get it just perfectly tuned with the Nelson Mag Castle dollars, that's pretty sick. This mag catch is just incredible the way it works. So how I use it is I stick a mag in there all the way and then yep. there's a there's a, a locking screw here and a threaded screw in the bottom. So I'll back this off. I put the mag in there. I'll tighten it all the way down where it's bottomed out against the axis. Nope. Then I'll back it out about a half a turn, pull down the mag, place it, snug it up. It's super simple to use. Perfect. Love this thing. Perfect. You're yeah, I can't wait to get mine in. I know I ordered this color. I just can't wait to get it in and get it bolted up. That's sweet. Titanium blue? Yep, titanium, titanium. blue. <laughs> Perfect. All right, thanks, Steve.